Welcome to the Life a Bit Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Mullins, and today's guest, Brendan Sagalow. Please follow him on all social media at Brendan Sagalow. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How's Holy it going? Shit. <laughs> oh, my God. When you, said, when you said comedic amount of time, I somehow knew what you meant because I'm it's, like, okay, it's probably an old computer. <laughs> it's insane, dude. It's like it takes me like 30 minutes to fucking to start, start the, this goddamn computer. So like I was, I was like, when I, it's crazy. Like I got into, I mainly got into like listening and watching podcasts basically because of the pandemic. I'm pretty sure like everybody else in the world. Mm. And it's like, I, I've always liked watching, listening to stamp comedy, but I like hardcore got into it once all this shit hit. Yeah. dude. And like, I'm discovering like all this great stuff I never knew existed. Like what? And I well, it's, I can't, I can't remember how I, I heard your name. I want to say. I'm a big fan of the Tuesdays with Stories podcast. Ah, and I want to say I heard Joe. I want to say I heard your name on there, and I like I just like to look people up. And mm. I was like watching all of your clips on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I just thought it was hilarious. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and and I and I you know and I was also drawn to the uh, I was also drawn to the No Effect shirt. Yeah, I'm the only one that still buys those shirts. <laughs> that still have, buys I, like tons of band T-shirts. I'm, I still do it too. I mean, I, I saw that. I was like, Oh, he must be a fan of that type of music. For sure. I'm both, man. I like, I like that music, but then I'm also like heavy into like hip hop and everything. Yeah. I, I'm like, I like, I'll listen to anything that sounds good. Yeah. There's just, it's, if it has a good beat and it has like, you know, I'm really big on like the hooks and like the lyrics. If it sounds catchy, I'm into it. Mm. Dude, I have a, I have a thing that I do every year. I have a Spotify playlist that I start a new one every year. Mm -hmm. um, I call it only because it rhymes. I like it. I call it the masturbation compilation, whatever. <laughs> I, I just makes me laugh and, and it rhymes. It's so funny though. Sometimes I'll like be telling people about it and they'll be like, do you jerk off to this music? And I was like, no, no, it's just uh, whatever. No, what are you crazy? Some people might, but <laughs> <laughs> there's only um... one song that I think I could jerk off to. And that's, pony or or that song that's like uh uh grind on me you know that always gets me but that spotify playlist those spotify playlists that i do every year it's like there's so many things that are just like it's so fucking random it's like one thing will be like mac miller and then mm -hmm. it'll be the uh the song from uh the jungle book you know yeah <laughs> like, like the I, next thing's the jungle book i got into like in high school I got into like playing music so I like I play guitar and bass and it just my love of like punk was just like my friends were like hey check this band out and I was just, I was hooked mm -hmm. like just mm -hmm. instantly hooked and um and that was strictly what I was listening to for like many years no effects or is that who we're well, talking about I, dude like punk like a lot of pretty much any band on like fat records yeah like yeah. strung out and lag wagon and all that stuff and, oh I love lag wagon and I mean, I don't I, love them. Let's yeah. not, we don't have to talk shop about Lagwag. You'll no. find very quickly that I don't know anything about them. But I like Lagwag. Everything I hear from them, I'm like, oh, this is good. This is good. And I just, I'm like, this just sounds so cool. And then, like, as I got older, I'm like, you know what? If I like it, I'll listen to it. Like, my the library on my phone has, like, literally everything. It has, like, heavy metal to, like, really, like, death metal stuff to Taylor Swift. Dude, yes. To, um I mean, there's a uh, three, six mafia, like just yeah. like, everything. There's yeah. literally everything in my library. It's so funny, man. Like having a, having like a hating a specific genre is such a high school move to be like, I fucking hate country. I like everything but country. And it's like, yeah. well, there's some really good country songs or yeah, like, I like Kesha. You know, if I talk to myself yeah. in high school, I, I would think I'm a fucking loser, but I like Kesha and, and uh, who doesn't like that fucking song? Cold beer on a Friday night. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, it's funny because my my cousin's a huge country fan, and I'm like, for some reason, this is the one country song I always remembered. It was that one. Yeah, and I started singing that one, but yeah, like that's a weird song because they say like, you know, there's a weird part in that song where he's like, uh, in a child's touch or something like that. Yeah, it's like that's oh, and the the touch of a child. It's yeah, weird. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know all the uh. I don't know all the lyrics. 
and um <laughs> but yeah like because that's mainly he's kind of like me but that's mainly what he listens to and like sometimes i'm just like oh man this is tough and then other ones i'm like all right okay yeah and i like a lot of like the old it's it's just crazy like because i went through that high school phase where i'm like oh rap ugh. oh yeah. this uh you know yeah, and then yeah, yeah. i started like discovering all this stuff like I like a lot of the songs on the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack. I really? Mean, I, yeah, I like. I'll listen to everything. You know, just like guilty, <laughs> guilty pleasures. You know, but yeah, of course, um, of course. I fucking like in high school. I remember when Lil Wayne came out, uh, or or when he like got really popular. Yeah. I was like a solo artist. Everybody was like, oh, Little Wayne. And I was so against it for some reason. I was just like, this guy sucks. He's not a lyricist at all. And now, cut to. <laughs> 10 years later i'm like bumping little way and i'm like in the shower fucking listening to him i uh last last july i went um i went to see blink 22 and lil wayne because mm. they toured together and it was me and my sister and, and uh her youngest son and all of a sudden you know like i live in virginia and have you ever heard of jiffy lube live no okay it's it's probably like it's the big venue in virginia and um I'm like that's a weird pairing and then like Lil Wayne played some band called Neck Deep opened okay and Lil Wayne was in the and his light show was like insane and I like I respect him cuz he has an actual band playing with him really yeah like a Whoa. drummer a guitar player bass that's player that's awesome and you just see clouds going up half of, of it course. was actual smoke and half of it was like weed of course and my dude. nephew was like is that i'm like yeah it is <laughs> i was like are you getting hungry yet that's that's like one of the best parts about going to a concert is when you uh like any cons not even a rap concert you just see a bunch of weed smoke come up when yeah. people are on like at specific it, times and stuff it's like people didn't care and i'm like they're like how they even get that in there i'm like i'm like yeah nobody cares like people were in like two rows in front of us and I'm just like, it's easy to sneak in weed. This is what you do. You roll it in a joint or a blunt, put it, grab, get a, get a hair tie, right? This is how I would do it. Get it, put, get a hair tie, put it on your belt, you know, uh -huh. and put it on the inside of your belt and tie it like that. So it's like they, they check your pockets. They're not checking the inside of your belt, you know? So we used to sneak weed in all the time. Uh, that's, that's so funny. The best. I, yeah, I've never, I've never done that. Uh, cause I, I went like, I, I'm like the kind, I'm one of those guys that I like to, I guess, socially drink if I'm out and about, but I went through a phase where I like had a, had a problem with like the hard stuff mm -hmm. that I just, I don't go near that stuff anymore, Yeah, you know, yeah. but, uh, like every now and then I'll like, like, you know, whether it's like trying, like I tried like a gummy for the first time. And like, uh, uh, it, was, it was, it was pretty, I was pretty much paralyzed uh, <laughs> and like, I, apparently it was a, you know, apparently the half that I was given should have been cutting in half, but <laughs> how much was it? Do you know, like how much was the milligrams is, uh, 25. Oh, that's a sweet spot. I love a 25. And I, I, cause you know, when my cousin's wife was like, you know, it hits everybody differently. And I just remember being like, okay it was when it was kicking i was like all right this all right i can deal with this this feels good i'm happy yeah. and like every 10 minutes it just kept intensifying and i was like i was sitting there and i'm like i think i have to go to the bathroom but i'm not sure <laughs> I, was, like, I couldn't really move my legs like you know that feeling you get when you have to go to the bathroom yeah but i couldn't oh, yeah. really tell if i was getting that feeling edibles will do that to you too like every time i take an edible i'm constantly pissing for some reason <laughs> I'm just constantly going to the bathroom. Um, so you, got, you what? Yeah. I was gonna say when you go to the, but you gotta when you're on an edible, you gotta avoid the mirrors. That's that's like that's something I had to learn real quickly because you just start staring at yourself. Not you know? like necessarily seeing stuff, just like staring. No, you're just staring at yourself. You get lost in your own eyes. It sucks. <laughs> so um. Was it the seventeenth you recorded your first album? Yeah, yeah. Now, I so I was it. looking at pictures on Instagram, like, so you got video and audio. Yeah, yeah. It's so. Um, how did that go? Like, it was talk awesome, about that. dude. Like, it was awesome. I mean, we were filming, so we did it on a on a roof in like Midtown by the Flatiron. You know, the Flatiron where it's like that uh that Daily Bugle building. You yeah. know. 
Um, we did it right by there, right on the right on the eighth floor. So it was like close enough to the street that you can hear cars and stuff. And it's got a real fucking vibe to it. It's like it's not like I was just listening to it yesterday because I have to, uh, you know, edit all together and everything like that. Yeah. And um, we sold we sold it out at two shows. And, um, you know, everybody was kind of socially distanced a little bit. You know, it was probably irresponsible like it wasn't like completely socially distant but yeah enough but you know and uh it was fucking awesome man it was like i didn't have much time to run the hour a lot of it was about corona and everything and you know i i recorded it and then i heard some comics like other people doing corona jokes and i'm like oh that was right there i wish i fucking said that god damn it like i heard ari doing a bunch of um Ari Shafir doing a bunch of mm-hmm. Corona jokes one night. And I was like, fuck dude. I was like, this is so much better than what I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, it was a fucking time, dude. I'm, I'm looking at it as like a kind of a time capsule of this time for me, you know, like where I was at, what I was talking about. Um, and I'm really excited for it to come out. I just want to, I just want to get it done, put it out and work on something else. Well, I think that, uh, I mean, the, the fact that that's it, the first one that's recorded outdoors, that's like, that's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Thanks dude. So, so like, so it, since you did two nights, what do you just do? Record audio one night and video the next night or do you no, just the, uh, kind of do both from both nights and kind of combine them? Well, it was one night, two shows. So oh, it was one night, seven, two shows. Yeah, okay. 730, 930. We had, um, uh, this guy who does like all, like he, this guy, Mike Lavin, who, um does a lot of stuff he did my canon special he did i've heard the name the name sounds familiar yeah he's a cool dude and he's a hard worker and he you know he um he does a lot of shit for the hyenas and those guys the history hyenas and uh you know he he did my web series uh the delivery boy series uh together and he fucking he's great we had a four camera shoot which i was like four cameras like who, who am i seinfeld what, what do we do we're on a roof here you're you know? just expecting like one camera <laughs> i was expecting two two, two yeah. and maybe like uh maybe like a little thing whatever mm-hmm. but four cameras i haven't seen the footage yet but he's he's definitely working on it and then one of the owners of the club that put helped me put the show on is a professional sound engineer this guy scott linder so oh, that's he, cool um he worked on the audio and everything and he had it plugged in from the microphone and we had, uh, you know, an audience mic and stuff. And, um, it definitely sounds like he's great. And it, it sounds, it sounds like you're there, which is like the, the, the type of albums that I love, you know, like I love, uh, comedy albums where it feels like you're in the fucking room with the guy like if you listen to bill burr's first album you can hear the receipts at a certain point which is cool like they're they're doing the checks and you can hear neat, 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 neat. you know they're printing yeah, I, the receipts and i love like hearing like the glasses hit the table and everything totally. and all that stuff and totally. i know i know what you mean so you can in some cases you can hear like the cars on the road yeah you can like, hear the cars so, so you cool. can hear like you can hear the wind it's not like whoosh, but it was yeah. like it, it's like you definitely hear the vibe of what it was, uh-huh. you know? So I'm, I'm super pumped to put it out. I, I really hope people like it. You know, it's some jokes kind of fail. <laughs> you know, it's well, like, I, I, I was, I, I, this is, I mean, I've done a few of these already and I'm just like, I always, it just the mind, like how everything works and comes together has just always fascinated me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and you know, and, apologies if some of these questions have been asked a hundred times before but i'm always like you know how does like what goes into it like i guess in the i'm guessing the the rooftop is that like the roof of like an actual comedy club or is it like a roof of a random building or it's the roof of a random building it's like it's a but the um, comedy club is like sponsoring it or whatever that's like the sign so, that was behind you or so these guys that run the new york comedy club which is um two clubs that are in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, one on fourth street, one on 24th street. They're actually like, these guys are fucking awesome, dude. They're, um, I work with them all the time. Like they work me all the time. I love them. And they're actually right now, they're kind of like leading the charge of this. Like I was at that rally today that they started, which is like the save New York comedy clubs and, Mm. and everything. And so they, they have been doing shows at this penthouse 
which is two apartments that was converted into an event space. And um, I think and, I think I've heard of that somewhere. I heard yeah. I heard the mention of penthouse or something. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. I think Mark, if because you say you listen to a lot of Tuesdays, Mark's there all the time. And, okay. Um, yeah, you know, one time actually, I was fucking there. Mark mentioned everybody but me, so that guy's fucking. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, it's it was uh, it, so they put it on together, and uh, the the owners like um, they're running shows there every fucking day. They run about five shows at this penthouse every day. And it's, it's just it's just because I guess the what the laws in New York you can't have the actual clubs open. Yeah, because there's like have, a bar there, and people can't be inside, and they're you know they're rallying against it because they're opening bowling alleys and oh, yeah. opening bars at a at a like at like twenty five percent capacity, and they're like, why are they excluding comedy clubs from this? You know? Yeah, but I, people that's... are people are doing like outside backyard stuff, park stuff. You know, I remember okay. like a because in Virginia, it's I don't even know what phase we're on now. I mean, there's still some restrictions, but like it's pretty much almost back to normal except for everybody has a mask on. Yeah, and like I remember when stuff like started opening back up. Like I, my cousin and I went into a Hooters like a few <laughs> like a few months ago, and that was actually the first time I ever went into a Hooters, and uh, we were literally probably inside there were maybe six other people and that's it wow. like it felt so good to sit down at a table and oh, order a meal and eat you know versus oh let me get takeout you know and let me yeah it's also like i i just hope we're not like we don't have ptsd from this shit where if we see a big group of people you know there's kind of a part of me that's like Ugh, you know i hope that's yeah. that's not something that lasts because that's that's terrifying yeah i just i and it's funny because it's like I've only, I've only actually been to New York once. I rode one of those mega buses up there, mm -hmm. and the the weather ended up being like horrible and like didn't plan properly. Didn't bring an umbrella. It was cold. It was windy. It was raining. Yeah. Had to buy an umbrella. The umbrella broke. But like I've just been hooked, especially <laughs> on watching all these clips online of like these outdoor comedy shows. It just fascinates the hell of me. Like that it's looks like crazy. so much. It looks like so much fun, but it also it's so looks crazy at the same time. It's okay. Like it's, you know, people were doing shit outside before all this. Uh, people, you know, I've done my fair share of outside shows, shows without a mic, shows that are like hell gigs. So this isn't new to me, but I would yeah. love to be able for the comedy clubs to open up again because, you know, people really fucking want it. You do shows now and people are grateful that everybody's there. So I can't imagine how crazy good those shows inside are going to be once the clubs start opening up yeah there it's it's probably it's going to be i imagine it'll be like a major event yeah i hope so like when i i don't know like it's like the the specials like i tend to like more i tend to like more or and i, I i'm gonna sound like a complete idiot because like i don't know new york that well like i've heard of like the popular places but like the specials for example like Joe's special and Sam Marill special. Like, is that Comedy Cellar? Is that where those were? Done? Yeah, that's at that's at a place called the Village Underground. So well, it's I, owned I, by the seller, but it's around the block from the. I love like those tight places, like yeah. the small and just very. Yes. that just seems more. So I guess, that's in a way. Yeah, more. I, I totally. love stuff like that. I love that. I, I love big theater ones too. Like, you know, I I like them all. Like, it, like I loved seeing Louis. You know live with the beacon whatever yeah. or like where shoot where he did shoot up or whatever but then also seeing like his comedy store one which was really mm -hmm. cool or like whatever you know it's i think at the point in my career that i'm at this is kind of perfect because uh you know i i could have probably sold out the new york comedy club and had this big you know at that place it's like 90 people so it's like i could have probably done that this is even smaller since 32 so it's incredibly intimate. Like there's, there's, it's, it feels like I'm fucking doing a speech, you know, like a weird protest speech. I, yeah, I saw how there was like, like groups of like two sets of chairs, like spaced apart and kind mm -hmm. of like looking at the pictures. I'm just like, man, that looks so cool. Yeah. And people came out, man. Like I'm, I'm so grateful that 
friends and family and fans came out. Like the second show was mostly fans and it was better than the first show. And I was like, this is awesome. Okay, the first so show was fucking to weird. just use stuff from both of them on like yeah. the recording and Yeah. Well that's usually what they do. Usually usually film like two and then um like two or three. I think three would be perfect. It the the standard is usually two. Uh-huh. Uh where you do two shows and you kind of pick apart the best of the you know and put it all together into one thing but i think three because i think the first show should be a fucking warm-up because that's how i felt i did the first show and i was like ah, ah, ah. he's kind of like, feeling it out you know yeah then, feeling uh, out feeling what i should say what i shouldn't say what feels good here and then the second show was just laid back it was cool it was relaxed it was awesome so if i did a third show after that although i'd be exhausted i think it would be like pew, 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 like it'd be it would be great and then naturally afterwards you know you were like on a high from that and you like probably like oh yeah afterwards and naturally i mean oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah i fucking i partied so hard i'm still feeling it dude i'm fucking i'm still feeling it it was it was crazy i didn't black out thank god i, I, I think my body doesn't let me black out i go super hard and i just don't black out i remember everything that happened that night but awesome. i was uh I know I was fucking I was gone dude I woke up in Brooklyn and I was like what <laughs> the fuck I um I went uh in August I went to visit a friend and and I don't drink often at all but I'm like you know everybody there is like partying I'm like I'm trying to hang you know yeah so I, I was just like drinking hard and there was like a part of the night like that I do not remember and like my friend was, is a firefighter and she was like, okay, well, at one point we moved you to the couch and did this with your life. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I yeah. remember like waking up like, oh man. And, oh, then, like, I, and then my head was like throbbing like, oh, you know how to fix that? Yeah, keep drinking. <laughs> so like that. Very true. So that's, and I was surprised that that actually helped. Yeah. They call it the, never, the hair of the dog. Yeah. And I learned that there too. I had never heard that before. Yeah. That's like, that was shit that would happen to me in college where that doesn't really happen very often now where people are like, like do you remember when you said this or you did this and i'm like incredibly embarrassed by it yeah. <laughs> you know and i'm like i don't remember that at all fuck kill me yeah, yeah i just i was like you know i i'm like i didn't do anything stupid did i you know and she's like yeah no. i was like okay um, i know i'm always like i'm always like oh i'm so embarrassed i'm so sorry and people are like no you were great you were great <laughs> Which is always worse too, because you're like, <laughs> you're making fun of me. <laughs> when, um, like, when did you? This is kind of like a standard question. Like, when did you like decide, like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. Like, this is what I want to do for a living. Um, I was at a, I was 19, and I, uh, I was at this party in Long Island, and it was kind of like a, you know, I was just at this party and. It was, it was just like, I don't know. I was never like, what am I going to do with my life? But I was just at this part. No, you know, in Long Island, these people, when you're young, you, no one has a direction. Everybody yeah. is like, you kind of look around and you see all these like fucking middle-class drug dealers and these people that are like still acting like they're in high school and everything. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, man. Like I want to get the fuck out of here. And um, coincidentally, they were playing a Patton Oswalt special at the party and everybody's yeah. drinking and having fun. And I'm just watching the special. And I, the next day I signed up for a bringer, which I didn't even know there. Were, I just went on Craigslist and I was like, stand up. And, uh, and a bringer is what a bringer is a show that you do when you're new to stand up where you don't necessarily have to do them, but they, you get booked on a show but only under the, the guise of like, you have to bring seven friends or eight friends. Or if you're, you know, if you're a big comedy club, they're like, bring 14 people. And you're like, fuck. And if you bring all those people, you get like five minutes on stage. And I would be doing that once a month for like a huh. couple of months. And you run out of friends really quickly because you're bad at comedy. So they're like, and also comedy clubs are so expensive that they're like, they're like, we can't keep coming out and spending a hundred bucks to watch you be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so then you kind of have to find another way. You start doing open mics, maybe intern at a comedy club, which is what I did. And, you know, it's just like, you get a buck. Like, 
as soon as you like, if you're somebody that needs attention, having that for the, even five minutes, you're like, mm, 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 mm. you're yeah. like, I need, I need this. I need more of this. And then it just starts getting to a point where you're like, Oh, I think I could get good at this. Like, you know, you, you look at it as like a craft and you fucking you start getting, trying to be really good. And then if people respect you, that feels good too. And it's just filled. It's just an ego trip. The whole, the whole thing or an ego death. It's a it lot is. of ego death. There's that. De- I mean, I, I like to think if you don't like attention, if you don't like attention, something's wrong with you. For sure. I mean, I've, you know, I've always been the type of, I was been the type of guy, like I'm always friend zone, put in the friend zone by chicks. Me too. Me and too. like all throughout high school, like I, you know, I'd start talking to somebody. I'm, I've always been shy and awkward and like introverted and stuff. And Oh, but yeah. you're like my brother. Oh, you're my friend. Like, uh, like story of my it life. Sucks, like, dude. It sucks. When I when I get lucky, I get lucky, but it's very rare. It's very rare. <laughs> yeah. And like, but when somebody gives me attention, I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, uh, especially guys, man. Like, we are so men are so starved for any positive attention that when a woman could just be like, oh wow, you're really funny, and I'm like, oh, uh, uh, like I immediately fall in love with that person. Yeah. Because we're so starved for it, you know? And, like, how, how I am, like, I've always – the tend to the, – the comedy when I'm watching or listening to the stuff that I tend to like, I tend to like very offensive stuff mm-hmm. and very dark stuff because it's impossible to offend me. Okay. And, and apparently there's, like, so many people in the world that are just easily offended and it just pisses me off. Yeah. And, like, they're comedians telling jokes, like, what's your problem? Like, I don't, yeah, I don't get all, it. It's all about who you surround yourself with. Like a lot of people that get offended by things surround mm-hmm. themselves with people that don't talk like, like comics do and don't talk like people that don't care do. Yeah. You know, there are all these people that are, and they're usually people that are looking to be offended because it's their personality. Like they're like, I'm a hero because I, you know, I'm, I'm offended by someone you know, saying something bad. And if I get offended by that, people look at me as the good person. And because I don't really have anything else besides like, you know, these people in like bumblefuck whatever who go in their jobs and they have their jobs and their family and they go home, they wake up and they do it again. They come home and blah, blah, blah. They're so desperate for a personality that isn't fucking the, the, you know, the rat race of working that they get offended by things and they're like, well, you know, I'll go on Twitter and, and, and look how much of a hero I am. And then they go like, well, that's what makes me special because I care, blah, blah, blah. It's all fucking put on. It's all fake. Nobody gives a shit. When you really think about, I think everybody in the back of their head is just afraid of dying. <laughs> you know what it is? That's, <laughs> that's all it is, you know? Yeah. It's like, I, and like sometimes well, like, my cousin and I, like, we have these, like, sick, twi- sick, twisted conversations. And, like, around some people, I'm just like, oh, I can't say this or I can't talk about this. Because mm-hmm. some people are, like, are just so, they're so touchy about some stuff. And I'm like, well, why do you even care about that? It's kind of yeah. like going back to what you said. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I got, like, really touchy. Like, I'm not, like, a, a huge sports fan, sports fan, but I follow some teams. Mm-hmm. And me being from Virginia – my my team, for, at least for NFL, is Washington, who now doesn't actually have a name. Yeah, what are they? Because they were the Washington Braves, right? Well, they, it was the Redskins. Oh, and then they yeah, yeah. now they're the Washington Football Team, <laughs> temporarily <laughs> just for this year. So when it came out that they were going to drop the name, um, I posted something on Facebook and I almost kind of did this on purpose. Cause I knew people were going to like chime in mm-hmm. and I'm like, their name isn't offensive. You know, their name isn't offensive to Indians and whatever. And, da, da, da. and it, within minutes, people are like, you're just an ignorant white boy that doesn't know anything. And, da, da, da. and I was like, people get mad, man. And I was like, Oh my God. I was like, Oh, so all of a sudden you care about this. Cause it's well, something to chime in on. Like, I, I also don't care about the name at all like change it i don't give a shit look i I look at it like this if if that if that specific person if the native american if you're a native american person or or whatever and it does offend you and you're like i i hate that then fine 
I don't care. I don't want. I, I don't want anybody to be offended or hurt or yeah. anything. Go, go for it. Change it. Who gives a shit? If anything, the people who have all the red skin memorabilia should yeah. be incredibly like should be fucking. Do you know how what how much of a jackpot they just ran themselves into? Do you know how much if you have so much red skin memory memorabilia, you know how much money that's going to be worth when it says red skin? You're it, it, it's like create. You should be like change it. Fuck yeah, fuck change it as as much as you want. I'm gonna buy the jersey. Oh well, yeah, and, I'm, I and I have some stuff that I'm probably gonna sell down down the line. <laughs> you know, yeah. except I have well, I have a personalized jersey with my name on the back. I'm not gonna sell that, but yeah, there's there's no one's a, gonna buy that there's, shit. There's a <laughs> There's a few things I'm like that probably could be worth money a few years from now. Mm. It could be. Um, I just don't know why people care so much. It's like it's like insane about anything on both sides. Both sides are incredibly annoying. It's like it, the, the people that are like the people that are like uh, you're offended. Blah, blah, blah. It's like shut the fuck up, you you edge lord idiot. Like yeah. there, are, <laughs> shut up. You know, like do you really? Are you really like that? Like, there's one thing where when people lose jobs for mm -hmm. things that they say, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Um, but especially, it's it's not fucked up if you lose a job for what you say by the people. If they're like, hey, man, we don't like that, so you're fired. Yeah. But when people come for other people's jobs, that's when it gets kind of fucked up, where you're like, what are you doing, dude? That's the shit where I get, I get upset by that, but – on both sides, it's fucking annoying. The people that are like, don't say that. Ugh, you're annoying. The people that are like, <laughs> you know, Ugh, they try to be all, I'm offensive. Ugh. It's like, you're fucking annoying too. Can we just be funny? You know, can we just, do we have to have a, I hate, I always hated that argument. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like, I, cause there'd be, there'd be a time in life where like, I, I didn't know how to take a joke necessarily. Like, cause people, people fuck with me all the time, but now I'm just like, my skin's just thick, you know? And I, I know how to take a joke now, you know, but it's just like, for sure. Some, some people like just how to take a joke. I mean, I, there's just so many people that I just, I got tired of going on Facebook. So I'm like, it's, it's political this every day, political that every day. And I'm oh, just like, yeah. oh, and I'm just like, un, I'll, I'll, I've learned that you can unfollow someone, but still be their friends on there. Yeah. There oh, I've, I've muted so many people on yeah, everything. They're just posting the same stuff every day. And I'm just like, oh my God, I just, you know. Yeah. I it, mean, get off Facebook for sure. Like no one should be on that at all. No one should be on anything, but Facebook is like, well, that's a, that is a, that's a garbage pile. Or it's like, <laughs> it's somebody just going on there to complain. And I'm like, I don't really, I don't care to read this. Like, no, but you're also, you're also in, uh, you're also allowed to be offended if someone offends you. Like oh, yeah. as a comic, you know, we, me and my buddies, we, we bust our balls all the time. Like we talk shit all the time, but that's cause we're friends. So yeah. then people will try to bust your ball or hurt your feelings and I'll be offended by it. And I'm like, motherfucker, I don't know you dude. Like you may think you know me and I like having you enjoy my, my projects and my art or whatever. Uh -huh. But, but, you making fun of me or, or is like, that's not, I don't, I'm, I'm offended by that. I don't, I don't think that's cool, dude. Like, don't come up to me if I don't know you and, and start busting my balls. Like this isn't tough crowd. Like that, that era is gone. We have yeah. feelings. <laughs> you know, you listen to every comic is always like, I hate that. There's no comic. That's like, Oh, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I uh, uh, love it. I'll, I love busting balls. Comics don't like people. <laughs> this is just, just hate everybody in general, right? No, we're just like, it's just like, would you go up to a random group of friends and just start, you know, if you hear everybody busting balls and stuff, would you walk up to that group of friends and be like, oh, yeah, fatso? <laughs> that no, whole group of friends all. would be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's fucking ridiculous, man. So like <clears throat> when uh, what was I gonna say like when God I forgot what I was gonna ask forgive me I'm going That's off okay. the cuff I originally started I'm like oh you know like let me do like the little notepad thing on the phone then I'm like then that seems too that seems too serious I just want to be like That's cool is that sweatshirt that you're wearing is that a Mark Norman merch sweatshirt It is. <laughs> 
<laughs> that guy's so funny, man. I can't believe he got the word comedy on his merch. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because like I um the whole like sort of like I love hoodies. I'd much rather wear a hoodie than like a coat or a jacket. Yeah. And um I had a few hoodies and I finally started gaining weight. Like I've just been I mean, I'm still like tall and lanky, but like I've, my metabolism is slowing down a little bit and I'm like, Uh man, I need to, I need to order some bigger hoodies and, you know, so, and I was just like, I, you know, if it wasn't this, it was just going to be a band hoodie or something. (laughs) I mean, cause that's just, that's just how I roll. uh, But, (laughs) but it's just, it's just funny because like, I, like I said, like, I just think comedy like it's all i've been listening to it's all i've been watching other people's podcasts and everything oh yeah it's been dude. soaking it all in because as dark of a time as it is it's like i just i found like that i laughter is such a good medicine like and i just i love i love laughing i love hearing something completely fucked up and then just crying from laughing so hard that's what people a lot of people don't get which always amazes me it's like have you never laughed at, at something that was like fucked up, like fucked up in your life? That's like, it has to, have you never laughed at or joked around at like a funeral? How good does that feel? When you laugh at a funeral, like being at a funeral for a friend or whatever and like keeping it, you know, you're not, I'm not fucking like I had a buddy who um, killed himself a couple of uh, years ago and we were all at his funeral and, mm-hmm. um, it was actually a really good funeral. Like people were cracking jokes and everything. And uh, this woman went up who like, this guy was one of my best friends and I didn't know who the fuck this chick was, uh-huh. but she was like kind of making it all about herself and kind of like, whatever, just talking and, yeah. you know, and we got that vibe of like, was, was he like fucking her? Was he, fu- is it like a girlfriend or something? Like who is this girl? <laughs> and and someone goes, no, no, they never, he just hung around her. I bet he wanted to have sex with her and everything. And we're like, oh, well, okay. And then during her little speech, she was going, yeah, you know, me and, um, me and uh, Robbie were, were, uh, were, you know, we'd go out to bars. She's doing like a little speech. She's like, we would go out to bars. We'd go out to karaoke. And I miss, I miss all these like inside jokes. Oh, I miss how we'd wear our hats and, and everything. And everybody's like, mm-hmm. okay, whatever. And then she goes, um, she goes, every time we'd go out, people would be like, man, are they dating? And I'd be like, we're just friends. <laughs> and I turn to my buddy and we're at this guy's funeral. I'm like, man, imagine getting friend zoned after you die. And he just fucking <laughs> started cracking up and I started laughing and it was like this tension was just released. And that's like one of, that's like the best feeling in the world when you can take something that's like, God, I sound so pretentious, but no, when you can I... take something that's like, horrible and you feel terrible and you can laugh at it it's um it's such a good fucking feeling man i just don't get why people i guess i mean i understand if you don't feel that way and like you've never you don't like that as much as i do but it's it's the best feeling man i try to five i try to i try to find like the positive out of every negative and i try to i mean you're talking about funerals like I laughed at my own father's funeral and that was like, and, and people were like, Oh my God, you're horrible. But the reason I laughed at it was, I mean, of course I was a, I was an absolute mess during it, but of course one of his uh, friends got up to, it was, it's a, his side of the family was very preachy. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'll say about that. But uh, the, his <laughs> friend who got up there and started like, and I was just, my sister and I were all, And his friend got up there to start like preaching or whatever. And he started like yelling and like talking in tongues. And I don't know my, and I, and I just, I looked at my cousin, I just busted out laughing because it just sounded so ridiculous. And then like, I felt better the rest of the day. And it was just something like that. It just made me laugh. And I'm just like, oh my God. Laughing at a funeral is one of the best feelings because it's so dark. Yeah. And it, 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 I mean, obviously appropriately laughing, you know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, it, that's just some of the best feelings. Anytime I laugh at a funeral, like, like when my grandma passed away and we were all in Florida, we were all at this uh, church and, you know, they hire the priest and the priest doesn't, he does like a few diligence, you know, mm-hmm. but, you know, the guy's basically a hired gun that has to talk about this person that he doesn't even know. Yeah. 
and he kept getting her last name wrong, which is our, our he kept saying Sagalo wrong. Mm-hmm. And he was going, he was going like Sagalowini, Sagalowani, you know, he kept doing that. And I just started laughing. I was like, this guy is, it's insane. And my aunt just, she's crazy. She just yells. She goes, it's Sagalo. And we all started cracking up. <laughs> it's just one of the best feelings, man. I love laughing at a funeral. It, all right. If I wish I could do it more. <laughs> yeah, I I just I try to I don't know I I try to fi- I try to find the the humor in everything. Yeah, well, it's it's easier to be positive. I mean, it's easier to be negative than it is to be positive. I, and, uh, you without, know, it's another thing is like without giving without giving too much away, and only like a few of my like closest friends and family know what happened. But mm-hmm. when I was dealing with the issue I had with the drugs and everything. I did something at my previous employer that I probably shouldn't have done. And anyways, the (laughs) law showed up at my door. Oh shit. My door. And, um, would you shit on this guy's desk or something? Oh no. You don't have to say, you don't have to say. No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was a little worse than that. Uh, nobody got hurt. Um, okay. Let's just say it was involving money. Oh, and, uh, nice. To uh, I mean, well, to to support the habit I had at the time, of course. And um, I wasn't in my right mind, you know. And then it's mm-hmm. funny, like this is like a few months ago, and then like I after I was like cleaning everything, and I was straight, like the doorbell rings, and I'm like, oh shit, what is this? And then I'm like, I see like I see like the law outside, and I'm like, oh wow, oh, shit. And they told me, and right when they told me, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, well, and they're like, did you do this? I said, absolutely, I did. And I, yeah. was, I was straight up with them. I looked them right in the eyes. I said, yep. I said, I was doing this to support this. I said, I'm not that person anymore. And I'm like, all right, do what you got to do. They put the handcuffs on me. And I was like, oh, my God, I never thought in a million years this would happen. And I'm Good like, for you, man. And I'm like, so this is what the back of a police car looks like. <laughs> I was just kind of like, oh, my God. And I was, of course, I was petrified. And once I got there, I'm like, little things like I'd get out of the car and, and I know meanwhile like because I was engaged and then when we broke up I had to move back home so I didn't have any other choice mm-hmm. I'm like oh my mom and my step are probably like what in the hell happened you know yeah, and I'm like yeah. sitting there and I'm like the parking space says like prisoner unloading zone and I'm like oh my god wow and then they you know they took the mug shot and I was like well there goes my no record streak yeah yeah you know? and uh it's crazy, like, because they looked up, they're like, wow, you literally, aside from this, you have two speeding tickets, and that's it. I said, yeah, yeah. like, I made a mistake, and then the magistrate's like, and I was literally home an hour later, so I have an, I have an upcoming court date. Was, so this is recently? Yeah. Oh, wow. Re- recently, recently, as in, this happened probably almost five months ago. Oh, wow. Okay. But they let, me, they let me come home literally an hour later. Wow. Did, did you have to like make bail? No. Wow. No, it was, it was like, it was weird. It's like, you know, cause the greater than or equal to this amount equals this. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you get what I'm picking up what I'm putting down there, but, um, <laughs> I think I kind of get it. Well, a certain, I mean, a, a certain amount is, you know, this, uh, this level of, I don't know, but, um, I think yeah. I get get what you're saying. But yeah, so that happened and I'm just trying to and and then I, you know, I came home and like, oh, like the funny thing is, is like it, and I, I was just like, well, it is what it is. Like it happened. I did what I did. And I'm like, I'm not that person anymore. And mm-hmm. I, I gotta got I gotta go to court, you know. But I'm I I, I'd, I was talking to my cousin, I'd like to think that if something major was going to happen to me, it would have already happened. Uh, yeah for sure and and i and i like i'm trying to look at it in a positive light and i'm just like oh it was like an episode of like cops and live pd outside of my house at the same time yeah and also you could you could look at it like well i know what not to do now (laughs) you know it's it sucks that it's happening but i might be better for it yeah but it's i'm trying not to i'm just trying not to stress about it too much and i'm trying to just like hey you know whatever whatever dude just like i'm not I'm not, you know, I, I, I always look at it. It could always be worse. No matter what's going on, it could always be worse. For sure. And that's It'll, the, yeah. that's the kind of attitude I have to have about it. And I didn't mean to go on that ramp, but it was just on the topic of, you know, laughing about like the serious mm-hmm. stuff. 
And yeah, dude. And it's also like, you know, and therapy was, is, has been huge for me with this stuff where it's like learning to accept and, you know, it, that's huge. So it's like learning to be like, all right, well, I did that thing. I'm, I'm getting the consequences from it. Um, there's nothing I can really change about it except for how yeah. I deal with it, you know? And it's, uh, and I, and I, like, I kept telling them, I was like, you know, what's done is done. I'm like, don't, I'm like, I'm not going to stress or worry because that's not going to help anything. Yeah. It's it not really going to help. The, I'm not going to help the situation. But you could also let yourself worry. Like, yeah. Like you could let yourself be like, okay, let me take a second to just be like, to scream into a pillow, you uh-huh. know, because denying something like that could, could hurt more, which is another thing I learned in therapy. Like we, you want to, you want to hold down the negative feelings, but some things like, like if you're, if you're, I don't know, like if your girlfriend cheats on you yeah, and you have, and you're upset and you're like, why am I upset? What, can, how do I get rid of this upsetness? Mm-hmm. That's more, uh, it's more beneficial to just go, of course I'm upset. My girlfriend cheated on me. I am mad. Let myself be mad. This is completely acceptable that I am upset instead of what I used to do, which is like, not dumb about me at all. And then just fucking swallow it and punch a wall. And also it's like, um, I mean, it happened and I, in a a way I almost, you know, cause you know, I always had that like guilty conscience, you know? Of course. Like, of course, like why in the moment, like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't at the same time. I wasn't in my right mind. I legitimately wasn't in my right mind. Yeah. For and, sure. um, and, but in a way that it happened, I'm almost relieved now. Totally. Cause you're like, like I'm just like the uh, weights off my, sh- yeah, I've got yeah. the, the date coming up, but like, I've just, the weights off my shoulders. I'm like, all right, it's out yeah. in the open. Totally. Let me deal with this. And Let's move on and move like, on time, time to move on. Cause when you're holding it in, you're like, when is this going to come up? <laughs> it builds and the pressure builds. Dude. And builds and- it's like cheating on your wife. You're like, you're like, when is this going to come up? This could come up anytime. I could get that phone call at any minute. Yeah. But once it's out, you're like, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Clean slate. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, doing confession at church. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I've never, I've never done that, but I, I know people who have, you know, I, I did it once because it was a part of my confirmation. You know, I was like 12, but it's like getting something <laughs> it's, but it's like getting something off your chest. And like, when I came home and I explained everything, like I just sat down and I just took, I just did like a, Oh <sighs> yeah. And I just like, great. it was just like, it was just like, Oh my God. Like I felt, and like, I, it just, I was like telling people like, I feel like, the most like content internally than I had my entire life. That's like, great. I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing. Like the weights off my shoulders. And I'm just like, Oh, this feels amazing. I fucking love that, man. Um, is there, is there anything like, do you have anything up coming up that you want to like plug or anything? Not that, a, not that a million people are going to be listening to this. Um, it's still <laughs> getting off the ground, but hey, I mean, you whatever, get what dude. I'm saying though. I get it. Uh, well, if anybody that listens to this likes podcasts, I do have a I have a f- free one that comes out weekly called Garbage Days that I do with my buddy Scott Chaplin. Um, I have one that's on Patreon if you want to support an unemployed artist. Um, but we actually do have free free episodes of that too. So it's called What's the Scenario, which you can check out at uh, patreon.com slash scenario pod. And uh, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter and be on the lookout for my, my album slash special to come out. Cool. And that's it. Do you have an idea of when it's – well, I mean, you got to go through the whole editing process and all I'm that. I'm hoping and- soon. Yeah, I'm hoping soon. I, I have to do that tomorrow where I'm going to a recording studio with the sound engineer that recorded it, and we're going we're gonna to edit it together and shit. And, and then soon make as that the, comes make out – Make the audio sound as good as it possibly can. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to ask him if he can make the laughs sound a little bit louder because I listened to it and I'm like, I'm like, this has got to be a little bit better than this. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure there's ways to. I'm pretty sure there's ways to do that. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll add a we'll add like a studio laughter from you know Three's Company or something in it. 
<laughs> so is your plan are you are you trying to like get somebody to buy it or are you gonna like are you gonna go the youtube route i'm gonna go the youtube route because because um, that's see that that's been working from what i've been seeing it's been it working works. it works for for some people there are also some people that it does not work for but um right now i'm i'm look i'm in talks with a label about releasing the album uh through the label i have yeah. to i just sent them a revised contract with my with uh that I showed my lawyer who also happens to be my father. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, my dad lawyer looked at it. He is the fucking King. So he, he sent it back to me. I sent it to them and we're in talks, but uh, yeah, I just want to get as many eyes on it as possible. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's a, it's a fun little album that I did on a rooftop in the middle of a, of the apocalypse. <laughs> that's that's dude that's what makes me want to like watch it and listen more so like if you get like the album version mean that'd be just like the audio version so i could like yeah. go on to, like itunes or whatever and add it to my library for sure my- spotify whatever yeah. we're gonna try and get it on pandora um serious it's gonna be fucking it's it's gonna be everywhere hopefully you're and- gonna get sick of me well, like just the, the kind of person I am, like how I am, I'd much rather watch something as opposed to listen to it. But mm-hmm. I definitely listen if there isn't like a TV or computer around. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping to get them both out at the same time. Like it sucks because there's a lot of moving parts to this yeah. whole thing and a lot of people that I have to keep up with. You know, yeah. like I have to talk to um, Lavin, who's great, but he's got so many other, um, he has so many other projects. Plus, he goes on the road with, Bargazzi to film um, Nate, Nate, Nate's uh, like shows and stuff. Yeah. And he's going in October. So I would love to get this ready before that, but what, you know, what, what can you do? So I have to keep up with him and, but not make him feel like I don't want to make a, you know, I want to trust him and everything. And then also the sound engineer I have to talk to. And it's a, it's yeah. a lot of moving parts. The, the, the record label, this, that fucking thing all circling around me and I have to fucking keep the, the I have to keep it intact because without that, these people don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they'll make something and let it, let it die. Who cares? Well, I, I know there's like only so much you can reveal. I was just kind of curious as to, <laughs> so you're, you're kind of looking, you're hoping for like sometime in October? Yeah, I'm hoping for as soon as possible because I would like to be the first one to get this out, you know, if anything. If anything, I'm sure, you know, there's always a bigger fish. Someone will put something out that's like, we'll probably overshadow mine, but I'd like to get mine out first before somebody does it. And they at least get the first spot, you know, yeah. at least if I can get anything, get the first guy to release an album during this. And it's, and it's the first, and it's the first outdoor. It's not on your first, it's your first, it's the first outdoor one too. I think so. I don't know. I mean, that can't be true, but the first, the first one through a label, I'm sure. First one, the first one that'll get a lot of listens, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I appre- dude, I appreciate you doing this. This has been fun. Thanks, man. I'm, yeah, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you asking me to come on. I appreciate that you were super cool with me sleeping through the s- scheduled one that we had. But no, and, I've, uh, I've, I figured. I, I put two and two together. I'm like, well, if I was a comic and I, I was like, I'd be out late partying. I'm like, you'd probably. I know. I completely just fucking. I let the night get away from me so quick. Like the minute I got off stage at the first one, I just. I mean, at the second one, I just fucking started t- taking shots. I started like going crazy so i appreciate you giving me a second chance it's all good i appreciate you doing it again hell yeah dude i'll talk to you later bye bye thank you so very much for checking out this episode of the life save it podcast please follow brendan on all social media at brendan sagalo follow the podcast on all social media at life save it pod if you're watching on youtube please like comment and subscribe and if you're listening Please rate and write a review. I appreciate the support. New episodes every Friday. We'll catch you on the next one.